Jesus, the Son of God, is the man of sorrows, but also the man of complete joy. Henry Nguyen. This is The Bright Forever. Hello and welcome to The Bright Forever, where each week we rediscover the power and richness found in some of the greatest hymns of the faith. My name is Andy Peavy House, and I am your host and guide on this, our incredible journey through hymnody. If you don't know this already, Easter is coming quickly. Last season, Easter coincided with the end of the first season for us. But this year, you will actually have a few extra episodes after Easter to enjoy and set us up for the next amazing season of The Bright Forever. Yes, that's right. You heard it here first. We have been renewed by me for a third season. Woo! I can't tell you how excited I was when I heard the news that we would be doing this amazing podcast for another year. <laughs> Granted, I heard it from myself, but all kidding aside, I truly am excited for yet another season of amazing hymns. And it is all because of listeners like you. All of you out there, I wouldn't keep doing these if it weren't for your incredible support and response. I don't usually ask for something specific like this, but I would love it if each of you listening would take a few minutes out of your day and send an email, fill out the contact form, or record a short message and tell us why you listen to The Bright Forever. I know that for many of you, that goes way outside of your comfort zone. But I would love to hear from each of you who listen week in and week out and find out what it is that keeps bringing you back each and every week. Is it your love for hymns? Is it my smooth, dulcet tones? <laughs> Doubt it. What is it that brings you back each and every week? And I know... I know I say this a lot on this podcast, but thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming back week after week. It's encouraging, inspiring, and humbling to think that you want to hear what we talk about on The Bright Forever. So again, I say thank you. Today, we'll be diving into a hymn that if you simply go by its title, may seem a bit depressing and sad. Man of Sorrows, What a Name, penned by Philip P. Bliss, is actually a beautiful song about the one who bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, whose amazing love and sacrifice bought our pardon and ransomed us back to the Father. So join us as we uncover the rich history, theological depth, and enduring legacy of this often overlooked but truly beloved hymn. Philip P. Bliss stands as a luminary in the annals of hymnody, renowned for his prolific contributions to Christian worship. Born in rural Pennsylvania in 1838, Bliss's early life was marked by humble beginnings. He left home as a young boy to make a living by working on farms and in lumber camps, doing this while also trying to continue his schooling. He was converted at a revival meeting at the age of 12. 
And despite limited formal education, he had an innate musical talent. That talent, along with a deepening faith, propelled him toward a remarkable journey in hymn writing and composition. At the age of 18, Bliss embarked upon his journey of musical pursuits, initially learning the rudiments of music in a local singing school. This early exposure to music ignited a passion within him, leading him to pursue a career as a music teacher and eventually as a church musician. Bliss became an itinerant music teacher, making house calls on horseback during the winter and during the summer, attending the Normal Academy of Music in Geneseo, New York. Bliss's ascent in the realm of hymnody was marked by an unwavering dedication to his music and a profound commitment to Christ. 1864 saw his first published hymn. And just four years later, in 1868, D.L. Moody advised him to become a singing evangelist, a path that would see him become one of the most esteemed gospel songwriters of the 19th century. Bliss's hymnography spanned a wide range of themes, reflecting the depth of his beliefs and his desire to convey these timeless truths through music. From the jubilant strains of, Oh, how I love Jesus, to his haunting refrain of, It is well with my soul. Now, he co-wrote that with Horatio Spafford. Now, that hymn is a story many of you have probably heard, and I'm sure we will do at some point. But that's a whole podcast in and of itself. But Bliss's compositions continue to resonate with believers across generations, offering solace, inspiration, and a powerful sense of connection with God. Tragically, Bliss's life was cut short in 1876 when he and his wife perished in a tragic railway accident. He was just 38 years old. Yet his legacy endures through the power of his hymns, which continue to enrich worship and foster a deep communion with our Savior. Bliss's hymn writing transcended the boundaries of time and space, capturing the essence of a life lived for Christ while inviting believers to enter into a deeper relationship with their creator through the songs that he composed. In 1875, just a year before his tragic death, Bliss, inspired by Isaiah 53, composed the hymn, Man of Sorrows, What a Name. Capturing the themes of Christ's sacrificial love and our desperate need for redemption. Philip P. Bliss left behind a legacy of musical excellence and unwavering faith in each of his contributions to hymnody. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Bearing shame and scoffing rude, In my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Savior.
guilty, helpless, lost were we. Blameless Lamb of God was He. Sacrificed to set us free. Hallelujah. What a Savior. He was lifted up to die. It is finished, was his cry. Now in heaven, exalted high. Hallelujah. What a Savior. When he comes, our glorious King, all his ransomed home to bring. Then anew this song we'll sing. Hallelujah, what a Savior. So let's delve into the theological depth of Man of Sorrows, what a name. Each verse of this hymn unpacks significant truths about Christ's nature and redemptive work upon the cross. The hymn opens with the poignant declaration, Man of Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. This line echoes Isaiah's prophecy, emphasizing Christ's dual nature as fully God and fully man. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by man a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. In Philippians 2, 6-7, it says, Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus humbled himself, taking on human form, to redeem our fallen humanity. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Then in the second stanza, we encounter substitutionary atonement. Bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood. It mirrors Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And by his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6 depicts Christ's sacrificial death as the Lamb of God who bore our sins and whose blood seals our pardon. Hallelujah. What a Savior. The third stanza contrasts humanity's guilt and helplessness with Christ's spotless perfection. Guilty, vile, and helpless we, 
spotless lamb of God was he. This verse helps to underscore the gravity of our sin and at the same time magnify the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Romans 5, 6 through 11 says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Romans 5 reminds us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were that guilty, vile, helpless humanity, the spotless Lamb of God took on flesh and became the sacrifice for us to set us free. Hallelujah. What a Savior. The fourth stanza vividly portrays the culmination of Christ's redemptive work. He was lifted up to die. It is finished, was his cry. Now in heaven, exalted high. Hallelujah, what a Savior. This is probably my favorite verse. The imagery of Christ being lifted up to die in the hymn echoes not only Jesus's foreshadowing of his own crucifixion in John 12, 32, where he says that the Son of Man will be lifted up, but also finds a connection in the Old Testament. In Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9, the Israelites, plagued by fiery serpents as a consequence of their sin, are instructed by God to look upon a bronze serpent lifted up on a pole by Moses. Anyone who looked upon the bronze serpent that was lifted up was healed from the deadly venom of the serpents. This passage serves as another foreshadow of Christ's crucifixion. Just as the bronze serpent was lifted up for the physical healing of the Israelites, Christ was lifted up on the cross for the spiritual healing and salvation for all of those who look upon Christ and in faith believe. Jesus himself even drew the parallel when he was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Verses 14 and 15, where he says, And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And then Jesus declares the completion of his mission to atone for sin. As he cries, It is finished. Through his death and resurrection, Christ triumphed over sin and death, redeeming all who believe. It concludes with the exaltation of Christ in heaven, now in heaven, exalted high. And we go back to Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, where it proclaims that God has exalted Christ to the highest place bestowing upon him the name that is above all names, that at the very name of Jesus, every knee will bow 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I love that verse. In just four lines, it says all of that. He was lifted up to die. It is finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah. What a savior. And then in the final stanza, we anticipate Christ's triumphant return as our glorious king. When he comes, our glorious king, all his ransomed home to bring. It echoes Revelation 19, portraying Christ's victorious reign and the eternal joy awaiting his redeemed. As believers, we eagerly await the day when we will join our voices with that of Philip Bliss and countless others singing praises to our Savior for all eternity. As we draw closer to Good Friday and to Eastertide, may we be stirred to deeper reverence and worship of our Savior. Let us reflect on the truths captured in this hymn and allow them to deepen our understanding of God's boundless love and grace. I invite you, as we go through this week, to meditate on the words of this hymn. Hang them on your mirror, write them in a journal or a notebook, and each day, read it or sing it, stanza by stanza, and allow these words to permeate your heart and soul. As you go about your week, may you find solace and strength in the unchanging truths of the gospel.
That was Man of Sorrows, performed by Nathan Drake of Reawaken Hymns, from the album Hymns of the Sun. For more information about this song and all of the amazing resources available at Reawaken Hymns, check out the links in the show notes for this episode. But like I said at the beginning, upon first glance, you may see the title, Man of Sorrows. And some of you may have just glossed right over it and not even listened to this episode. This may, you may be listening to this weeks, even months down the road going, eh, I guess I'll listen. Because when you first see it, you're like, man, Man of Sorrows, I, I don't want to listen to that. It seems depressing. It seems sad. And like, I'm, I, I don't want to hear him like that. Sort of, sort of like a few weeks ago when we did From the Depths of Woe. Like, uh, I, I don't know if I want to listen to From the Depths of Woe. That sounds like a really sad and not fun song to sing. Jesus, the Son of God, is the man of sorrows, but also the man of complete joy. I love that quote. Because at first glance, this song does sound like it's going to be depressing and sad. But what I hope you have experienced in our time together today is that this hymn is nothing if not pure joy. Hallelujah. What a savior. Its lyrics encapsulate the depth of God's love the power of Christ's sacrifice, and the hope of redemption for all who believe. Man of sorrows. What a name. This powerful refrain serves as a resounding declaration of the awe-inspiring nature of our Savior. As we close today, may the truths that we've explored resonate in your hearts and minds. Let's carry the message of this hymn with us as we go. Sharing it with others. Allowing it to inspire us to live lives of worship and gratitude. Remembering no matter the trials that we face, or the sorrows we encounter. We have a Savior who bore it all for us. And in Him, the man of sorrows, we find true and everlasting joy. Thank you for joining us this week on The Bright Forever. Remember to follow us, review us, and of course, subscribe. You can check us out on our website at thebrightforever.com. And of course, like I said earlier in this podcast, we want to hear from you. Take a moment, step out of your comfort zone, and send us an email. Or click the Contact Us tab and tell us what it is that brings you back to The Bright Forever week after week. I would love to hear from you. If you don't want to send us a message or type something, you can always click the radio microphone in the bottom right corner and record a message of up to two minutes and tell us what you think. Don't miss an opportunity to show off the fact that you listen to The Bright Forever. You can go to our merch store. You can get all sorts of t-shirts and other things that you can show other people, hey, look at me, I listen to this amazing podcast. And last but not least, if you would like to give to help support The Bright Forever, on our website at thebrightforever.com, you can click on support the podcast. In the show notes, it says support the show. There's a little link. If you want to click on that, you can give three, five, eight, or ten dollars per month. Or if you're not ready to give every single month, there is a yellow coffee icon at the bottom right of our website that you can give a $5 or greater one-time gift to help support what we're doing here at The Bright Forever. And uh, it really, truly amazes me that any of you enjoy this enough to give, and I thank you for that so much. 
Thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great week. Before we go, let me close us out in prayer. Lord, we come before you today with our hearts filled with gratitude for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who willingly endured the cross, who bore our sin and sorrows, the one who became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. As we reflect on the depth of your love for us, may we always be reminded of the sacrifice your son endured so that we can have a life and life eternal and full. Help us to meditate on the message of this hymn. But even more, even more than that, God, help us to live each and every day in the light of the power of the gospel. Give us the faith and the grace to believe and to embrace your word and to share the hope of salvation with everyone that we meet. May the hymns that we look at from week to week continue to serve as a reminder of your faithfulness to us each and every day. Guide us by your spirit. Empower us and fill us with a renewed sense of purpose to glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. As, as I was just praying, I was reminded of a chorus uh, by Andrew Peterson uh, from his song, Faith. I think it's called Faith to be Strong. And it just says, give us faith to be strong. Give us strength to be faithful. This life is not long, but it's hard. Give us grace to go on. Make us willing and able. Lord, give us faith to be strong. I don't know if you needed to hear that. It just came to mind as I was praying. And so I wanted to share it with you. Have a great week. I'll see you back here next week. We're out. Mm-hmm.